Hey there, home labbers and engineers. FE Engineer here. So today we're going to look at ControlNet and getting it installed. It is probably one of the best and most important tools to use for stable diffusion because it allows you to generate a lot more control over what is actually going to come out of your image. Let's get started. So I have been meaning to make this video now for a while. But to be very honest about it, ControlNet is complicated. There are a lot of parts and pieces. It is difficult to know what some of them do. And at the end of the day, for the most part, it's going to be an amazingly useful tool. But honestly, you will really need to play with it quite a bit to be able to learn how to use it properly and how to get the most out of it. But even with that, it is absolutely one of the most interesting things that you can possibly add to Stable Diffusion. To install ControlNet, it is simply an extension. You'll see I have it installed already right here and there's a GitHub repo. So you can install from URL on the GitHub page, you can see that it will tell you the specific URL, which will be down in the video description. But grab this, put this into the extension URL, hit the install button. Once that's completed, you will be able to come over here, check for updates, and then you can either apply and quit or reload the UI. Using the directions on the GitHub installation, it will tell you that you need to come over here to get the models. And so you can open this in a new tab and it will bring you over to this page. Every single one of these files is roughly one and a half gigabytes in size. So depending on how much space you have on your hard drive, you may need to either free up space or pick and choose the ones that you want to use. But what you are looking for are these .pth files. Those are the Python files. You will click the download button and it will download them for you. And once you have all the ones that you want, we are going to open up our file folder. The easiest thing to do is to open up two different file folder windows. One where your downloads have gone to and then the other one Go into Stable Diffusion, then go into Extensions, and then you should see a folder for Web UI Control Net. Inside of there, there will be a Models folder. And then inside of that Models folder is where you will take all of the files, these PTH files, and put them inside of here. Once you have that done, you will probably need to reload the UI again. And once your UI is reloaded, you should now see ControlNet down here. Inside of ControlNet, you're going to see a lot of different options. But in short, this is what you end up doing. When you want to use ControlNet, enable it. If you have low VRAM or things like that, feel free to check whatever boxes make sense. The allow preview button will open up this preview window and you'll see here we've got a picture of Iron Man. I'm using open pose and this little fireworks icon will run the preprocessor. And what open pose does is kind of what you would think. It effectively looks at the image, tries to find a person, and then tries to find the pose that that person is actually in. And you'll see that overall, this looks pretty good. You know, this is reasonably the shape of the person and the pose that they happen to be in. So down here we have control types and there are an awful lot to choose from. I'm going to go through probably my two favorite and then I will just quickly go over the rest. You'll see a preprocessor 
as well as a model. These models are the ones that you actually downloaded from those uh, .pth files. So if you don't happen to have a model available, then it will not work for image generation because this model is the piece that gets used. The control weight of one, you can move the control weight up or down. Generally speaking, I find that one is entirely fine. It is a reasonably good balance without, without overpowering anything else. Starting control step, if you want it to start at the first image generation, you want this to be at zero. Ending control step, if you want it, if you want control net to be involved through the entire image generation, then you want this to end at zero. Generally speaking, I find that the starting control step of zero and the ending of one is fine. There are a few specific circumstances, like if you're just getting a rough shape, you could maybe only have control net be involved for like half of it. The preprocessor resolution probably doesn't matter that much. And then the control mode of balanced, my prompt is more important or control net is more important. Generally speaking, balanced is probably fine. However, you can absolutely play around with this. And the resize mode, most of the time, it's not really going to matter because generally speaking, you're probably not changing sizes too much. But so something like open pose, which is probably one of the most common things that I use. You'll see I dropped in an image. I clicked this sort of like fireworks icon. It said, this is the pose. You can actually hit the edit button and it will pull up your image and pull up the, the outline of what it drew. And if you want, you can take points and you can draw them out yourself and move them around to be more precise to what you want. But then you just send back and then effectively you can create a prompt. And so you'll see that the prompt I put breathtaking cinematic style, Wonder Woman, DC Comics, award-winning professional, highly detailed. And you'll see that from this specific pose, you'll see that Wonder Woman is in fact in that exact pose. And so open pose becomes super useful if you want to have people in a very specific pose or doing a very specific action. It definitely helps, although just like anything else, realize that, you know, it is a bit of a moving target. However, I like open pose a lot. I find that it's pretty funny to make people in poses that are pretty hilarious. The other one that I use an awful lot is this canny. And canny and depth and some other ones are somewhat similar, but I really like canny. So let me show you what we can do with that. So for this canny, I ended up doing this cinematic style haunted house, Halloween horror movie, and this is what it came up with. And overall, this is not too shabby. So we can click and drag, put it right over into here. We can use canny and it will effectively grab the details. And you'll see that like, this actually looks really good. This is very, very like crisp and clear. So now let's change what we want to prompt. So I went ahead and changed the prompt to, stay, to say Victorian style house, white picket fence, American classic house, sunset. And you'll see that it effectively used all the details of this image in order to generate this image from it so I maintained the details, but I was able to change it from nighttime to sunset. I was able to change it from a Halloween type house to a somewhat classical American uh, Victorian house. 
And so that starts to give you an idea of the stuff that you can do here with ControlNet. You can keep an awful lot of details that you had in one image and bring them over to another. So with that, I'm going to mostly leave people to enjoy their new toy and learn some new things. I will very, very, very briefly go over some of these things. Canny and Depth are very similar, although Canny draws the outlines effectively and Depth tries to create a 3D rendering with Depth. Normal Map is sort of the opposite of Depth. Open Pose we already talked about. Soft Edges is sort of a different way of using Canny. Scribble and Sketch is actually probably one of my favorite ones. If you've ever seen the people draw like a ball you know, just by scribbling, then you will have a good idea of what scribble actually does. This is still what it came out of from this. <laughs> so to be very honest, it is actually amazingly good at turning your literally trash scribbles into exactly what your prompt says. Some of these last few inside of ControlNet, I've never really used very much. Segmentation, shuffle, tile blur, I haven't really used very much. In painting, I haven't used very much. Instruct P2P, I haven't used very much. Reference, I believe it only uses this image as some sort of a reference for when making the new image, but I don't know exactly what it's doing to be able to give you a clear understanding. Recolor and revision effectively both are ways of trying to take attributes out of one image and put them into the other image. And then the T2i adapter and the IP adapter are things that I'm going to talk about in more detail in another video. But I would say absolutely, ControlNet is amazing. You can in fact use multiple ControlNet pieces together, although I will say you have to be very careful what you do with that. Just because you cannot copy the canny lines of one character and then try to repose them into a different pose because effectively those two ideas are both at odds with each other of if you want to control the pose, you can control the pose. If you want to keep the details, you can keep the details, but you can't keep the details and change the pose around significantly. Thank you guys so much. I hope that this has helped some people to get control net up and running. I know that this video is probably a bit longer than I would have liked. I hope that this helps to show some people how to use some of the basic pieces of ControlNet, although this really is one of those tools that you could have mastered the rest of Stable Diffusion and still spend a decent amount of time figuring out what these do and how to get the most out of them. With that, thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching my videos, home labbers and engineers. I create and edit all of these videos on my own, so any likes and subscribes will massively help out the channel and allow me to continue creating content to help people. If you got value out of this, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel to be notified when new content drops. If there's something I've not covered but you would like to see a video on it, please leave a comment down below. And again, a massive thank you to everyone. I hope you have a great day.